Okay, so there are more interesting things than having sex with a garbage disposal. <laughs> Can I give them like a, a little a little foreshadowing for the next tale? Ooh, have you started it? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> balls. Lots of jiggling, slapping balls. Yeah, in that next chapter, mm, get ready for it. I do not know what she's talking about. <laughs> I might I might realize it when I start it, but I do not. I think you're forgetting the majority of the first like five pages. When his story actually starts or while they're traveling to Hyperion? No, when his story starts. starts uh, I might. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is it them playing ball? Like, like as kids? No, they're... F- Fenmon Kassad, <laughs> right? The soldier. The soldier, yeah. The girls. Oh. Hey, I forgot that's how it. I forgot how that started. I forgot that that's how it started. Look, as long as there's no nematodes, I'm good. What did you guys think of the soldier's tape? Let me just tell you, there were. There were balls of slapping. You might have forgot it last time, but now you remember, don't you? I, I, Look, I don't know if I would have, have described it as ball slapping. Ladies, 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 as the resident expert on balls. Are you sure? There were not that many. <laughs> oh boy, how much Who's of this am I going to have to cut out? Who is the true so expert? So much. But that's not my point, who the best expert is. I would say William is not the expert. Unfortunately, all of this has to be cut. None of this can go in the video. It was hysterical. But I've read Ilium, which is another book of his, where it's like even more on display and weird. For me, it was uh, Rise of Endymion, which is the fourth book in the Hyperion Cantos. And oh, man, let me tell you, there was a a sex scene in Zero G. Ah, that's great. A blowjob was done upside down and i was like with what's happening in the narrative i don't want this right now like this is not what i'm yeah. for. but anyway <laughs> him and this lady who he calls mystery in this head which was just yeah i know that's what you call a cat it's, it's like it's a young <laughs> horny soldier's <laughs> romantic <laughs> horse it's a young horny soldier's romantic notion and then he wakes up one day after sex and moneta's like got these like metallic sheet things and she's like here put this on and she throws it on him and it like attaches to his skin and and basically creates a reflective body suit and she's in one as well i was imagining the matrix the scene where he touches Uh, the mirror and like you can still see when her nipples get hard which was a description (laughs) simmons decided to make sure you knew here's a question i have for you guys again between us four bachelors one masters is there a way and remember, we're drawing on all of literature here, to describe nipples in a way that isn't weird and always seems like the author has a thing for them. Let me think. Give us a sec. Wait a second. It's always weird and male gazy. Her too. nipples were pert. I don't like it. I don't he, like it. It's he, gross. Jacqueline Carey goes the route of never calling the thing the thing, and I don't like that either. either. It's like the the... I don't know. I there there have been times that have done it well. The pointed tips of her breasts, the triangular protrusions of the very ends of her flesh shacks on her chest, the sensitive bundles. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Of it's nerves. Just... She chewed on the sensitive. Ugh. No, here's here's what I think of when you say that. <laughs> she chewed. That's like a calf. Yeah, you're, upon that's how you chew. You chew with your molars. That would be hilarious, though, if you were like. <laughs> You chew that like a camel chewing cud. Ladies. Did that do it for you? Let us know in the (laughs) comments below. When he changes his mind from the Bushido code to full on chaos, he's like, I'm kind of turned on by the carnage. So that's also a very important characteristic that we're given is that he's hungry for war and violence. And then uh, while the Shrike is like in the background, they start going at it like ooh we like it's the the se- the horniest they've been in a while despite their like weekend long sex they fest. still got the silver bodysuits yes. on of and, armor death oh yeah we didn't mention that so she puts on this little body armor thing like we said the liquid metal thing but he too is wearing one when they touch each other the suits mesh so that their skin is touching and not separated so they start going at it like you got to build that scene maria there think 
like pile of corpses, like on a bloodstained, dirty ground. And they're just like, he whipped it off. She whipped it off. She's bloody. They're sweaty. And they combined. Before entering her warm slit. Oh my God. Yeah. So gross. But anyway, while they're going at it, he starts having visions of just a galaxy in flames. Just this battle of all these like ships shooting at each other, coruscating lights. Like it's a the beautiful destruction. And um, I'm gonna let Maria explain the next part because it requires a certain eloquence um, and specificity that I don't feel comfortable with. Excuse you, I might also- I don't feel comfortable with this kind of specificity. If you would like to what, unveil this moment to our- What, the idea of her our, becoming- Okay, okay, I've got this, unveil I've got this. this unless our, you want to. Go, go Katie. Why don't we go together? Let's do it together. I don't want to. No, not you, not you. Maria. <laughs> Nobody's here for you, Will. Okay, so I'll set the scene. We're talking about what's happening in this moment, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have entered the scene. Pile of corpses, as I said. Sex, the slapping of balls. But while this is happening, he's having so those is something else. Visions. Yes. He comes he's having the visions and he comes to... Parts of Moneta are shifting. All of a sudden, her boobs are no longer soft and fleshy, but there is metal there. And then her eyes go, the multifaceted red glow. Um, her face becomes angular and hot. And all of a sudden... The woman he was having sex with is the fucking Shrike. Literally to the point of a vagina dentata that has a whole bunch of uh, and he feels it. He feels his member. Uh start, like and he freaks out and he's like, well, bam. Oh no, no, no. Wait, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me get into this. Let me rewind a little. So before he pulls out, what happens is as he's having sex with her, has the overwhelming urge to continue. He can't seem to leave. There's a magnet inside of her punani pulling at the magnet inside of his. It literally says, and for our viewers, I'm going to attempt to use different metaphorical language. He wanted to leave her body, but he continued to um, swim amongst the metal over and over again. And finally, when he reached exaltation, he sprayed all over the place, essentially. There is a lot of liquid happening. It literally says, like, he's trying to pull away. Like, he's literally trying to get his body parts out of the Shrike's way, but he can't stop his hips from bucking. Like, it that's literally a sentence. He could not stop his hips from bucking because the orgasm had already taken it him into its hold. As he actually does pull himself away from the Shrike, he loses, he's losing chunks of skin. Skin, he's yeah. He's getting shaved by all of these blades and he ejaculates, I, I, you can cut that out. He reaches exaltation. He reaches exaltation on the dead head of an ouster and the Shrike <laughs> itself. And you're sitting there like, Kassad. Wow, this really took a weird turn. Kassad. Like this is like <laughs> this is like some uh, alpha omega level requirement of seed being spread. Yeah, so it's kind of a little strange and hypnotic, <laughs> and it almost made me wonder though, right? So this part I really like was confused. Did the Shrike? Well, first of all, right, we have the question: Is the Shrike her? Is she the Shrike? And are they one? And if so. Man, the Shrike has like good taste in men, maybe? Or very specific kinks. And there's a beautiful moment as he, he's pulled <laughs> away and after he finishes like- A beautiful moment. Yeah, I love the description of it. So after he's, you know, exalted everywhere, <laughs> he looks at the Shrike and the Shrike is turned back into Moneta, except the eyes are still red and the mouth is full of blade teeth. By the way, guys, um, I perfect moment to reveal- I knew you were gonna do awesome this. drawing. Um, here's my Shrike. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love and, it. It's Big and, Bird meets the Shrike. Yes, and here is the Shrike's other persona. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Katie's right. The, the question when you, because that's it. Well, congratulations. The soldier's tail. He had sex, and then the lady he was having sex with turned into the Shrike. Congratulations. He was swindled. He was catfished. He was catfished. This is a sci-fi story. He was absolutely catfished, but he was catfished by a the pain lord on another planet. And instead of using 
uh, Tinder or uh, Bumble or Grinder, what happened was is they used the great AI simulations, all, the all thing Technocore. Yeah, they used the all thing instead of Tinder to catfish Fenmon. To be fair, all thing is probably like a Norwegian dating app. The thing about Kassad's story is it's very like exciting. It is. And and the ending moment when like he's having sex and then suddenly it's the Shrike, you're like, for me, especially the first time I read it, that slapped me in the face. Like I was not expecting that plot twist. In a very lame way, I was hoping there was a true romantic connection happening. And Aww. so when all of a sudden his penis started getting like shredded by her like intensely non-organic uterus but like when it talked about like literally pieces of his flesh coming off and i was like oh why'd she have to go and hurt him they were having such they were having sex. such a good time it was so good like, and he shows him like a hollow recording of like <laughs> this lady and her lover having sex before they get brutally murdered by the Shrike. I would like to take a moment to describe that scene. I thought it was absolutely horrific and it was stellar. Wouldn't it be hilarious if the Shrike was just such, like, a, was a real prude? Like, he doesn't like people having sex, so he kills them. He needed to have sex, so he did it with, with Fame and Kassad, but then he was such a prude about it, he tried to kill him halfway through. Like, that's oh, the no. Shrike's motivation. You know you know what's funny is that I made up a little storyline in my head when uh, we figured out that the sh like you know that uh, what was her name again? Moneta. When Moneta switched, I was like, wait, is this also the Shrike? And if so, was he just horny for a dude that killed a lot of people? Like, was he turned on by that? I'm confused. And maybe he like the Shrike because of the time like thing. They met in a different time, and now the Shrike's just totally in love. And this is a secret like gay lover story. I think that's a good theory that we should uh, bear in mind. As Why are we making him? the Shrike a man? They do misgender him. They call him a he. And they didn't ask about his pronouns. So wait, I wanted to explain the sex scene real quick. Okay, go ahead. So picture <laughs> this. There is a naked woman laying across this box, if I remember correctly. The bed. The bed, that's right. That's right. So she liked uh, filming pornography. So it was on the ceiling. And so anyway, they're having coitus. And they're going faster and faster to the inevitable orgasm. It's very fun listening to Silenus uh, describe sex. Heteronormative to call it inevitable, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I should know. Anyway, I, uh... <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna have well to aware, William. I'm, well, I'm well aware that is heteronormative. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Right, so they're having coitus. And um, as they're speeding up to the inevitable orgasm, suddenly the man is just magically withdrawn. <laughs> and something's happened to him. And the woman looks up. And the woman still across the bed legs spread yeah i'm just like imagining the grossest thing ever he likes essentially like guts her doesn't he i don't remember. i clearly was not paying as much attention as you it was pretty gross <laughs> and it's like silenus describes like a spray of blood and like stuff like that so it's pretty stellar and it is like a very violent scene we have somebody who's from a military background and we've gotten that and now we get somebody whose life is the most that we can probably sympathize with as far as like a reader. No, I could identify more with feminine Kassad in terms of how I am as a person and the life I've well, lived. Wanting and to fuck garbage disposals. You remember when there was a time I went to the hospital for a little while and I told you guys it was appendicitis? <laughs> Surprise! <Yeah. laughs> Surprise! He touches the side of her head and in this moment, everything he is just explodes into her and just gets downloaded into this neural shunt on the side of her head and this is one description i did not like i wanted to I see know. how you guys liked it i was wondering <laughs> if you were gonna say that he had to fit in some weird sex thing so, somewhere he couldn't help himself like i said before the best sex scene we've ever had it wasn't weird or like and it was just very intimate and lovely. Um, he ruins it because he describes this as an analog to when he spilled his seed all over her stomach. No, no, no. It was his orgasm inside of her. Oh, yes. In oh, yes. It was inside of her. Sorry. I was confusing that with the cyborg tinker yes. one. Anyway. Yes. But he, <laughs> he literally describes- Different cyborg. PTSD just never goes away, does it? Feeling him explode, like his, his being just downloaded into her head 
it has the same effect as feeling his orgasm inside her uh, a... <sighs> impregnating. It's fine. It's whatever. And also it did not suit her narration that it was like that. That was so Dan Simmons just like creeping in there being like, <laughs> orgasm <laughs> it really took me out of the i, I did not love it i was driving again and i was like fuck stan simmons you had it took to me out. do it it took me because out of the otherwise scene. it's such an affecting scene of oh. her just she's carrying him up the steps like a child and like she's all this fire is kind of at her and she's just gonna keep going and she loves him and like it's a great scene and then like like, your what head. are you and doing, you know, like, dancing? It could have been that beautiful. Sound effect. It could have been like beautiful, descriptive scene. No, that's what we got. Images of the things that he'd been th- like. There's so many ways it could have been like light explode. Like there's so many ways it could have described it besides just comparing it to like a man orgasming inside of you. Like it just. But the point is, it's a it's a weird. It takes you out, and you might notice because we were. It was a pretty intense narration from us up to this point. As equally as we have. Like now we <laughs> talked about sex and orgasm. So too do you feel as you read this story. But you start getting as she gets older. Like there's like when she's 40, she's like, I'm getting let's, old let's now. Let's turn the lights off. And he's like, <laughs> not nah, baby, I got you. Okay, here's the thing. This is another Dan Simmons. There's a lot of discussion. Of bosoms and booties. Yes. I'm like, I don't need to know about how pale they are. I don't need to know the exact sagginess. He mentions it every time, and I'm like, okay, if I hadn't read the rest of the book, I'd be like, man, Marion's kind of, like, shallow and obsessed with this. But no, this is definitely Dan Simmons, because he does this all the time. Honestly, the first image that I have when I picture this part of the novel is naked Siri facing away from Marin in the water with her, with her, it said her butt cheeks kind of flowing with the water. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I don't like it. Why are her Hyper- Hyperion videos so goofy? We're I don't always know. Laughing it is at- so good. Like, guys, this it- is great literature. Like, don't let us make you think this is a comedy or we don't like it. This is this is great. 